let us look at page 129 okay this is example 6.10 Okay, now you know that when you are driving on a highway and you are going along a curve, you are going along a circular path, you know that the road is a little bit tilted. Achha, before I explain this, let us just revise uniform circular motion a little bit. So, what is uniform circle? This is a question related to uniform circular motion. So, you remember uniform circular motion, we studied it in the last chapter. Yaad hai? Hmm? Kya tha uniform circular motion? We studied the centripetal acceleration, right? So, the centripetal, uh, before doing this, I will like to point out on page 124, you have the uniform circular motion. So, this is the same as we did before. We know that this acceleration depends upon this is known as the centripetal acceleration. So, the centripetal acceleration depends upon the radius of the uh, path that you are taking. If it is a circular path, there is a certain radius and it depends upon this okay? and it depends upon the velocity. Similarly, Whenever there is an acceleration, we know that there is a force. So, we have a centripetal force where you multiply the mass using Newton's second law, you have f is equal to m a. So, this is equal to m b squared over r and this is called the centripetal force. Again. Whenever you are driving on a circular path, you do feel a force right and you have to control the car and that is the reason you always have to go at a, small, a lower speed on a curve, it is dangerous right. And one of the things that you will notice that is that especially in roads like highways that this the road at the point where there is a curve is a little bit tilted. You understand what tilted means? It is not completely horizontal, it is not completely flat right it is making a small angle with the horizontal. So, this is called the tilt angle. Um, it, this is called banking this this is also called banking. So, this is what the problem is about and that is what we are going to do now. Okay? Again you remember the figure we had about circular motion and you know the radius and the body and the force and you remember these figures right that we studied in the previous um, in the last chapter right. So, keep that in mind this is also on page 125 you can see this on page 125 again if you want. So, that is why these chapters are very interlinked they are not independent chapters actually we are using the same concepts, but in every day a time we try to uh, show you a different aspect of the same topic right. So, we are using vectors, we are using velocity, we are using acceleration, we are using Newton's laws. So, these are recurring topics that you have. Okay, so, now let us go back to the example we wanted to solve. So, let us look at page 129, this is example 6.10. Now, in this case you have the example of a circular highway right and the curved portion of the highways are always banked right and banked means tilted okay, to prevent cars from sliding off the highway. So, when a highway is dry there is a frictional force right and this frictional force uh, between the tires and the road it prevents you from sliding, but if for example, the road is wet then there is a higher chance of this force with the friction reducing and a higher chance of sliding you have to be more careful when it is the road is wet. So, uh, therefore, you have a figure here in which you are shown a circular path. So, you, you are shown a road 
a circular highway that is slightly tilted. Now, you might not feel that in my figure, but if you look at your, the figure in your book, you will understand this. So, this is figure 6.13. Okay. So, you will see that this is slightly tilted and the tilt angle is let us say theta. Okay. And you can also see that the radius in this case is capital R. This radius is capital R. Again, you know if your, if your car is driving over here, then the velocity will be taken in S V and there will be a direction of the velocity as well. Now, we can now draw the force diagram like we always do and in this case, the force diagram will be like this. So, you take the r axis and you take the y axis. So, r small r represents radial, you are taking the axis along the radius of the circle. Okay. So, you have your car over here, this car will experience a force due to gravity which will be F g. Please remember whenever you are writing the g, this is a subscript, it is not, if you write it equal to the f, it will mean it is multiplying, it is not multiplying, it is just a subscript, right. Okay. And then you have um, the acceleration, where is the direction of the acceleration in the case of a circular motion? The acceleration is always towards the center of the circle, right, which means along the radius. Okay. So, the acceleration will be along this direction. Okay, and we can let us say if these are the axes like this. So, in the normal, you know, as a reaction to the gravitational force, we always have a normal force which is F n. F n, what is the direction of F n? The direction of F n is okay. Normally, it is perpendicular, right? We should take it along the y axis, but you remember there was a problem we solved in which there was an incline, and when there is an incline, Fn also shifts. Jitna angle incline ka hota hai, utne angle se Fn bhi shift ho jata hai. You remember this problem we had of a block on a incline? If, if you are on a horizontal surface, it is always upwards, right? But if you are not on a horizontal surface, if you are in, you know, on an inclined surface, then this vector will shift accordingly, according to the angle, right. So, therefore, F n in this case will shift slightly according to the tilt angle, which is in this case theta. So, this will shift by an angle equal to theta. Is that clear? Although normally we make Fg on top of Fn, right? but in this case because we know that the car is on a surface which is inclined, right, tilted, therefore the normal will also be perpendicular to that and perpendicular will shift a little bit. Okay? Right. Okay, now, um, again we know that in order to solve any vector diagram, we have to look at the horizontal and the vertical components, right. So, if we look at the horizontal and vertical components, how do we do that? We drop a perpendicular from here on the both axis, right. So, one, one component will be known as F n r, this is the component along, normally hum isko kete F x, right, but in this case we are using r because we are talking of a circle and the radial axis. So, we are using r instead of x and the second component is uh, F n y, right. So, this is a k a, this is f n y and one is this which is f n r. Is that clear? Good. Okay, now, let us go further and try to solve the problem. What is the question here? Um, we have understood the problem, we have explained the problem and we have drawn a diagram according to the problem. So, this was the most important part of it. What is the second part? You identify what is given. Hai na? Okay, let us look at what is given. So, what is given is the car has a mass m and it is moving at a constant speed v is equal to 20 meter per second. So, you have m, you have 20 meter per second. Okay, what else do you have? Um, the radius r is 190 meters. So, r is equal to 
190 meters. What else? We have um, we have to find theta. Theta dhunda hai, hai na? So we have v. This is v, and we have m, and we have to find theta. Okay, you've done that. You know what you you are given. You know what you have to find. The next step is you have to identify a formula that will help you get this. Okay. So what are the formulas that are applicable in this case?